Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, Torrance Police Chief John New addresses the public on AB 109. We'll take you there. And the kids may be gearing up for summer camp, but one camp is struggling to survive this year. We'll tell you why. Then one local doctor weighs out the differences between catching UV rays and fake tanning methods. Plus, a gala takes its guest back to the roaring 20s. These stories are much more just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. Here are your top stories. The news of AB 109, or the state's public safety realignment, has been met with concern from county and city officials. And now the public is learning how this new legislation may impact them. Reporter Christy Wilcox takes us to a public workshop with the Torrance Police Department. By the, by the end of this year, Bill Getz started his neighborhood watch program 30 years ago. Getz is one of the many who felt attending the AB 109 workshop, otherwise known as the public safety realignment, is a vital part of keeping his neighborhood safe. We know what's going on, but, you know, all the more information we can get, the more helpful it will be to us. The bill relocates inmates from overcrowded state prisons to county jail. The police department started the workshop to educate the public on the bill, address the community's involvement, and talk about the role of the police department. It's to let the citizens of Torrance know exactly what their police department is doing in regards to this influx of a criminal element that's going to be coming back to our communities. This is the most significant change that we're going to see in our lifetimes to sentencing and corrections. As early as next month, overcrowding at the L.A. County Jail may force the early release of some inmates. So the Torrance Police Department wants the community to be proactive. The bottom line is, is that AB 109 is here. It's not going to go away. And really what we need is this community to remain engaged and call us if they need us. The department is training and collaborating with other city police departments while working with parolees to help integrate them back into the community. We're, we're not anticipating that these early releases are going to cause trouble. Um, we're here for a safe integration back into the community, give them the resources that they need, but at the same time doing our job in an enforcement aspect. Future plans for workshops will be as needed. Police suggest referring to their website, Facebook, and YouTube channel for education and updates and to continue to work with your neighbors. Reporting for City Cable, I'm Christy Wilcox. Thank you, Christy. For daily updates and information from the Torrance Police Department, you can like them on Facebook at facebook.com slash Torrance PD. Well, here are some highlights from the most recent City Council meeting. The Community Serves Department has declared July Parks and Recreation Month. Programs offered by Parks and Recreation benefit the health and wellness of residents. Many of these activities can be found in the Seasons Guide and Newsletter or visit torrentca.gov. The North Torrance High School wrestling team was recognized by the council after becoming the CIF Southern Section Division III dual meet champions. The Saxons defeated Santa Fe High School to earn the division title. Former North High wrestler and now coach Luke Santos and staff spoke about the team's accomplishments. The Centennial Committee announced more than $33,000 of revenue it will appropriate for its budget. The revenue came from the sale of promotional items and commemorative bricks. They also announced that there is only a short time left to purchase the commemorative brick. Anyone interested can call or email the Torrance Centennial Committee directly. As a result of the new economic activity and in an effort to improve business relationships in the community, the city manager's office is requesting the hire of a new staff assistant to help the city's economic development program. The new hire will assist in improving business retention, outreach, and recruitment. The city just got more floral thanks to a donation from a national organization. Reporter Jay-Z Jeans explains. Soka Gakkai International, or SGI, joined Torrance City officials and residents to celebrate the planting of 10 cherry blossom trees in Deportola Park. SGI pledged to plant 500 cherry blossom trees in Torrance Parks over the next 10 years. Nearly 200 trees have been planted so far. 
The ceremony was also to honor SGI member Maneo Hoshi with a humanitarian award for playing an important role in the tree planting ceremonies. Mayor Frank Scotto expressed his mutual appreciation for this project. Once we have 500 cherry trees planted, I'm sure in the future that people will be so honored to the fact that we've done this here. In the Japanese culture, cherry blossom trees represent life and vitality. They also represent the core values within SGI. Our aim is uh, creating value in society and uh, respect the uh, fundamental dignity of a human life. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jay-Z Jeans. Thank you, Jay-Z. For more information, visit cgi-usa.org or call 310-856-4280. Well, Torrance takes a trip back in time for a centennial fundraising gala. Reporter Ella Sagamonian takes us to the party that was the cat's meow. It was a few short years after Torrance was founded that the Roaring Twenties were in full swing. And today the Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation takes us back in time for a centennial celebration. We wanted to find something that would go hand in hand with the city's centennial. So we thought since the Twenties is such a fabulous era, well, why not uh, make it the Twenties? Plus we found an awesome performer that was available and so we brought her in. Janet Klein and her Parlor Boys performed selectively obscure 20s songs at the Armstrong Theater to set the theme. How could Red Riding Hood have been so very good still keep the wolf from the door? Guests dressed accordingly, donning zoot suits and flapper dresses. My dress is actually original. It was one of my grandmother's friends, so it's very delicate, also very short. And my purse is a real 1920s purse, and this is as close to authentic as I can get. My sister sent me this. This is fun, you know. I don't usually dress up for costume kind of things, but um, it's sort of a fun event, and why not? The fancy clothes deserved a fancy feast prepared by Chef Schaefer, which kept guests' appetites satisfied as they bid in a live auction. I got $700 of D. Who's got eight? $700 going once. A silent auction was held as well, giving a relaxed opportunity to bid on a variety of prizes, ranging from a timeshare in Spain to dinner with council members. We've got everything from kids' toys to car detailing to dinners. Uh, in the live auction, we have a ride on the Goodyear blimp. We have a, uh, the wonderful Chef Schaefer is uh, donating a, a dinner prepared especially from him. Money raised goes back to the foundation that brings the arts to Torrance. I was one of the founders of the Cultural Arts Foundation and it's really important that every year they have this huge fundraiser and have a great theme every year that gets people really excited. So when you get excited you come out and you spend money and that's what helps them continue their work. Gala goers took home keepsake by Paper Moon Vintage in the style of 20s photography props and all. The Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation threw an event that would make F. Scott Fitzgerald proud. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Ella Sigamonian. Thank you, Ella. For more information on the Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation, visit torrancearts.org. Coming up, we'll take you to a conference that inspires students to avoid destructive decisions. And if you're looking for a way to save money on collectibles, we'll tell you how you can do just that. <laughs> License and registration, please. Ah. You know why I pulled you over? Ah. That's right, you are texting. Ah. Sit tight, I'll be right back. Ah. Ah. Zombies. When you drive and use your phone, you pay over a third less attention to the road. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months. And now, we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to homes. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. A monthly fair is bringing bargain hunters into downtown Torrance. Reporter Maudette Lewis tells us why the fair is helping the area in numerous ways. 
I'm here at Street Fair Antiques, and today they're hosting their monthly Antique Street Fair. There are over 150 vendors in the streets, and you can also stop by here and have a visit with Scout. In addition to the three blocks of vendors, there are several antique and specialty stores to shop at as well. Restaurants and bakeries stay open during the fair, so shoppers can take a break and have a great meal. Street Fair Antiques holds the fair on the fourth Sunday of every month. Owner Julie Randall says they started the street fair to bring awareness to the community of all the great shopping available downtown. The city just finished the big redevelopment of the downtown area, and so everything looked really great, but there just weren't any shoppers. So they thought this would be a good way to bring people to downtown Torrance. Richard Morris has been a vendor for the past three years and says he gets great business here. He sells mosaic garden items and believes the residential location gives him a selling advantage. Part of the, the great draw here is that um, it's a residential area. People own homes here and they, you know, they'll invest in, in, in yard, you know, decor. There is a vast variety of items out here from typewriters and books to bicycles. And if you have pieces you'd like to sell, bring them on down and get them appraised. Dave the Appraiser is here every month to help you find out what your items are worth. Dave and his partners, Julie and Amy, have been coming to the street fair for 10 years. He says many people have items in their home and have no idea how valuable they are. He advises people to not throw anything away until they've had their items looked at. I was doing an appraisal and they had 17th century furniture. It's like a museum. The thing that was worth the most was thrown up in the attic. It was a valet. It was worth 60 grand. Josh and Alyssa are regulars. They keep their eyes open for mid-century pieces and today they scored big. They found a great mid-century painting, a set of chairs, pottery, and a comic book. They say they get really good buys here. We come here every month. Uh, we're, we live in the area, we're in Torrance, and uh, we come here to shop for deals. Dan and his wife Ann came down to look for antiques and traffic signs. Dan found three traffic signs today for $10 a piece and says that's a good value. Having so many vendors in one place gives shoppers a great chance to get the best deal. You can get good deals, but you have to know uh, the price range because uh, some of the people will sell a sign for 30 bucks, and then I'll go to the next venue and it might be 20 bucks for the same sign. In addition to the great bargains at the Antique Street Fair, you will be able to find unique, one-of-a-kind antique and vintage pieces for sale. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Maudette Lewis. Thank you, Maudette. For more information, visit TorrenceAntiqueFair.com. As local and federal budgets are cut, programs that rely on public funds are suffering. Reporter Charlena Brown tells us about one such foundation named after a movie star's son. The Scott Newman Center opened in 1980 after Scott Newman died of an overdose. His father, actor Paul Newman, created the center in his honor. The center is a place where families can go and bond with others that share similar situations. The Scott Newman Center was founded on a simple premise, to prevent substance abuse through education, and it brings troubled families together at the annual Rowdy Ridge Camp. The center has been fortunate to have support from Paul Newman. Since his death, the center has lost his biggest supporter, and after 30 years of success, the center is struggling financially. So what it's created for us is um, a bit of an, um, an urgency in trying to shore up the, uh, the funds that we're no longer receiving from, from the foundation. The Rowdy Ridge Camp is the most popular program at the Scott Newman Center. The camp for mothers and children affected by drugs and domestic violence gets support from counselors and staff with daily activities like swimming, arts and crafts, family dinners, and much more. Ruben Baraja says once the families finish camp, they leave feeling a certain way. Those same families, when they leave, they tell us they feel like different people. Their essence is there. They just feel uh, more relaxed. They feel definitely more hopeful. With the lack of money, this year's camp will only accept about 200 individuals instead of 500, and many families will be turned away. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Charlena Brown. Thanks, Charlena. To find out more about the program or to donate, visit scottnewmancenter.org. If you think teenagers are destined to make bad decisions, think again. A national conference is bringing together students from across the country, and they're inspiring others to make positive choices. Reporter Maudette Lewis takes us there. 
High school students from across the country are here at the SAD National Conference to learn how to avoid making destructive decisions and show their peers that making good choices is cool. SAD is a peer-to-peer -peer youth organization focusing on education, prevention, and activism. The event is being held for four days and this year's conference theme is the Prevention League, Discover Your Power. There are more than 40 workshops, skill building activities, and shared storytelling to help teens recognize their power to rise above negative influences. The organization was founded as Students Against Driving Drunk and changed the name to Students Against Destructive Decisions in 1997. President and CEO Penny Wells says students were the driving force behind the name change. The students themselves said, we're doing other things. There are a lot of things that, are this, that affect us the same way that, that impaired driving does. And we want to tackle the root causes, uh, not just a, a specific issue. The keynote speaker was Bobby Petroselli. Bobby lost his first wife when a drunk driver drove his truck through their bedroom while they were sleeping. He says a drunk driver didn't kill his wife, but the reason why he was drinking in the first place was the actual culprit. Before a person can drive drunk, they got to be drunk in the first place, correct? Thank you. So you know what I'm concerned? Why? Why is this man thinking the only way he could deal with his pain is to abuse alcohol? Shapiro High School in Temecula was honored today as the sad chapter of the year. Co-president May Tamayo says Shapiro concentrates on prevention. They recently held an anti-bullying assembly at an elementary school to prevent kids at an early age from becoming bullies. Bullying can be from anything as subtle as gossip to um, actual fistfights and you know that that um, is widespread everywhere even in elementary schools. Chelsea Hill is also a keynote speaker at today's event. She is currently a student at Monterey Peninsula College and says she is thrilled SAD asked her to speak. My story is about making the decision to get in the car with a drunk driver and um, as of that it left me paralyzed from the waist down. Chelsea is currently on the television show Push Girls on the Sundance Channel where she's learning that she can still be the person she was before the wheelchair. Students headed to the second floor to participate in workshop sessions that included everything from how to have a healthy relationship and safe driving to how to host your own reality party for parents that shows them what typically occurs during a teenage drinking party. Ara Ko is a student at North High School. Their chapter started with fewer than 30 members and has increased to 94. She says her favorite workshop is every 15 minutes. It's like an act. You pretend like you got an accident after like drinking and like your students, your peers get affected and see how it feels to have you like living without you in their lives. Toyota was one of the sponsors of the event and has been involved with SAD for the past three years. Karen Poland says safety is a priority for Toyota and teens are a huge part of keeping the streets safe. Driving distractions and, and um, driving is a killer of too many teens, and we really want to make a difference, one teen at a time. And last night, the teens took a trip to Disneyland thanks to Toyota. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Maudette Lewis. Thank you, Maudette. To learn more about how you can start a SAD chapter at your school, visit SADD.org. By now, most of us know about the dangers of sun exposure, but when it comes to artificial tanning, those methods are being questioned too. Reporter Jay-Z Jeans explains. Skin professionals everywhere would agree that UV rays from the sun and tanning booths pose a great risk to overall skin health. Less known is the potential effects of suggested tanning alternatives. For many seeking a summer glow, spray tanning has been the safest option. But after recent findings, some are questioning whether it's the best choice. Some members of the medical community have waved the red flag on spray tanning, citing the dangers of inhaling the skin darkening chemical diahydroxyacetone, or DHA. Dermatologist Noah Kraft says it's too early to label the chemical a health threat. I think when people are using something in a way it wasn't originally studied in, it's hard to say yes it's dangerous or yes it's not. The recent studies about DHA being dangerous are controversial. DHA was FDA approved in the 1970s as an ingredient in tanning lotions and creams. With the arrival of spray tans, recent studies have found that inhalation of the chemical can potentially cause genetic mutations. 
Kraft says that despite the new research, DHA is still proven to be safe on the skin. I usually recommend if you want to be tan, use a spray on tan or a cream to put it on. The tanning pill is another method that stimulates hormones that are involved in the natural tanning process. Kraft says that these pills, like spray tanning, need to be studied in greater depth. The bottom line for Dr. Kraft? Getting a tan through ultraviolet, dangerous. Using uh, tanning pills or spray on tans, we don't have any evidence to suggest that that's going to be more dangerous for skin cancer yet. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jay-Z Jeans. Thank you, Jay-Z. For more information on spray tan safety, visit FDA.gov. Coming up after the break, if you're planning to travel with your pet, we'll have an in-studio guest who'll give us some great tips. And now, another adventure with Savings Man. Look, honey, the neighbors just bought a big screen TV. Hey, I just got a bonus at work. Maybe we should get one, too. Hold on there. Savings Man. Using your bonus to secure your future by paying down debt or saving is a better way to go. Well, I declare you're right, Savings Man. Stay ahead by choosing to save. And don't worry about keeping up with the Joneses. But their name is Johnson. <laughs> For more tips and tools, visit choosetosave.org today. The strongest families are built one moment at a time. For more ways to make every day count, visit facebook.com slash make every day count. Fourth of July is right around the corner and if you're making plans to enjoy your holiday, you'll have to plan outside of the annual Fourth of July fireworks exhibit at Wilson Park. The fireworks show has been cut due to budget constraints within the city. Well, the Torrance Police Department also said there will be a traffic contingency in the area of Torrance Beach due to expected overcrowding for the 4th of July celebration. If you are making plans to celebrate, consider using other areas of Torrance. As a safety reminder, the use of fireworks are not permitted in the city of Torrance. June Glue may be keeping the hot weather at bay, but the dog days of summer will be here before you know it. If you live in a home without proper ventilation or air conditioning, there are two designated cooling centers here in Torrance where you can go to beat the heat. The Bartlett Center uh, Senior Center and the Katie Guys at Civic Center Library are both designated by L.A. County as cooling centers uh, where residents can come to beat the heat during regular business hours. You can just dial 211 for locations and hours. And finally, as many of us plan our summer road trip, some vacationers will travel with their four-legged friends. Here to tell us how dog lovers can keep their best friends safe on the road is Canine Corner host Christy Wilcox. Ben, that's right. If you're planning a vacation to the beach or to a national park over the summer and you've decided to take Fido with you, you may want to plan ahead before you pack up for a long ride. Here's some tips you'll need to know before you go. Pack up your favorite pet's toys, blankets, water, and food bowls to relieve any undue stress. Make sure your pet has up-to-date tags and registrations secured safely on them, and you'll also want to carry a photo of you and your dog just in case you get separated. Last, pick up a copy of the AAA Pet Book Travel Guide. It has tips on pet-friendly hotels, airline travel, and required vaccinations. And when you pick up a copy of the AAA Pet Guide, you'll find a Tibetan Terrier named Lady on the back cover. She's from Torrance, but in order to see how she got there and to find out how your dog could too, you'll have to check out Canine Corner this month. It airs every day at noon and 8 p.m. right here on City Cable 3. Thanks, Christy. Great tips, and that's one of the great shows. Your show is one of the great shows on City Cable 3. Well, that's going to do it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. If you've missed any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.